How's it? How's it? And we are back, continuing our D24 teardown. Last video, we filled up the cylinders with some kerosene because it's stuck. And now it's been about three weeks later, and we're going to try to unstick it. I got a ratchet strap hooked up to one side of the engine, and I got a massive cheater bar on the other side. Giving it the business. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen. It's a 27 millimeter bolt on the end of this thing. And it feels like it's doing something, but I'm pretty sure what's actually happening is I'm about to shear the bolt head off. So thankfully I'm smart and I quit while I'm ahead. Not after trying one more thing though. Give her the beans. Same story here. So, not freeing up the engine. Time to take her apart. So now it's time to get to work taking off all the extra junk on the cylinder head. We're going to start with the intake manifold on the back. And like everything here, you're going to want to free it up with tons of PB Blaster. PB Blaster is your friend. The intake manifold is 6mm Allen's. Should be a piece of cake. It's usually the exhaust that gives you trouble. But I have it hooked up to a breaker bar. And that was probably unnecessary. And fast forwarding through the boring bits. Let me know what you think about fast forwarding through it. Could go for longer, maybe more chill vibe kind of videos. I feel 15 minutes or 30 is a pretty good mark. But let me know what you think. And I got a surprise for me in that cylinder number one. Just wait. Slow it right back down. Whoops. There's water in cylinder one, which is not a good sign. That's probably why our engine is nice and stuck, and I just gave it a smell test. I'm not eating it, don't worry. Just to be sure it's not coolant, and it is water. So water in your engine is not a good sign. It'll definitely lead to it being stuck. You'll get a buildup of rust, and your engine will freeze. So there's a good chance that's what we're doing here. At this point, I'm hoping just the very end, cylinder number one, got water, where the intake is. You can see on the right there, there's a hole. Some rain might have got in there, and I'm hoping it's just that first cylinder. And off it comes. We have a bit of fuzzy aluminum corrosion there, but it's just powder at this point. Yeah, just grab it. There we go. Just powder. Nothing to worry about. Cylinder one is the issue. Sludge. And now it's time to take off the exhaust manifolds. These are 12 millimeters, surprisingly. And these are the troublesome ones. If you get any issue with things shearing not coming off these will be the ones but this time they actually come off really easily for once the one six i worked on no way there every last one of them was trouble rounded them all off but it looks like i got lucky here And now that everything I can get to is broken off, I'm going to switch to a ratchet just to make life a little easier. 
can't get to these ones down here. Nope. Ratchet time. And once again, I've sped it up for your viewing pleasure. There's a lot of just doing the same sort of thing in this video over and over again. Got six cylinders, got plenty to do. Plenty of repeat. There we go, there's half of them off. These back ones are a little stickier from oil. They wanted to stay in the socket. Yeah, I didn't realize that one was in there. I accidentally put it on. Put it back on, I should say. I'm trying to grab all the washers that come with them, too. I don't want them running off. stuck again come on and I just fished it out with a bolt from the intake manifold and because of the bend in this exhaust, I can't actually get to it, so it's on it with the end wrench. And then this is one of those eighth turn at a time, so I just skip ahead. And off it comes. Now for both of these, they got the gaskets, so I'm just going to peel all the gaskets off. And who knows, I might be naughty and reuse them. But they're the same as a 1.6, so they should be pretty easy to find replacements. No excuse. And now it's time to actually take all the head bolts out. You're going to need a special tool for this. This is an M12 triple square. It's something that Volkswagen and Mercedes are absolutely in love with. You'll have to get yourself some uh, specialty tools for it. And these are really on there. I really wish that I had turned on the phone camera on the tripod because then you'd be able to see me just writhing around on the ground while I try to turn this breaker bar into a rowing machine. Remember to use your strong muscles, like your legs. And if you're wondering why I'm not working on this on an engine stand, because the engine is stuck, I wasn't able to get the torque converter off. So now there's just a giant torque converter on the back, and I can't put it on an engine stand. So I'm just stuck doing it the hard way. There we go. And I just realized that one of the head bolts is covered by the vacuum pump. In hindsight, I think you could pull the plunger out from the front, from where you are right now, and you don't need to take it off. But I end up taking it off. Probably want to do that anyway. Come on, big man. You got it. And now it's fast forward O-Vision. You can hear me just generally not having a good time. Both legs this time. Look at that. It's funny. Now I can backseat drive my own videos. 
probably better that it's on the ground. Now I could use it like in a rowing machine. These bolts are all, they're all stretch bolts. So they're pretty on there, but once you just break them loose, they come out pretty easily. So they're torqued down to the point where the bolts actually stretch, but it's just uh, elastic deformation. So the springiness keeps it down, the head down. Now it's time to get that vacuum pump off. Those are 13s. You'll be able to get the top one with a socket like I am. That's the easy part, and it's got a washer. Don't let it get away. The bottom one escaped on me. Forget it, man. You're not going to get it. Not with the gloves. And you need an end wrench for the bottom, like I said, because the angle that that pump comes out at. And that's pretty tedious, so just give it one turn and skip ahead. Pop. Off it comes. And you can see the plunger that's actually keeping the head bolt covered that's still there but you can just fish it out and like I said you probably can grab it out the front side too I just didn't know now there's just a couple more things. There are some sensors in the front, a sensor in the back, of course the head bolt that I apparently forgot about. But sensor in the front, sensor in the back, those are just held on with spade clips. There's a bracket. You see I already took the bracket off in this clip. And then this glow plug line that's looped around on the engine side or on the block side. It's an 8mm to take it off. To take off the very end, I see they designed it in. You don't actually need to take the nut all the way off. It's a fork. Fork-shaped clip. And now that everything's broken loose, time to rip them all out. Impact isn't working the greatest. I think the batteries are pretty close to being dead, but it can unscrew these. And there's also washers. We're going to take out all the washers. Sometimes they can actually make their way into the valve springs. They won't break anything. Just keep track of them. Getting at them with a pick. And just got to go around and do them all. Way hey and up she rises. There we go. Got the head off. But not before it pees all over the place. And now it's just time to clean it up. I got lucky. There was water in cylinder one. But because it was at top dead center, it didn't actually fill with water. But cylinder three did. It was actually quite full of uh, water. And there's a lot of rusty buildup. Right now I'm just sponging it all out. 
going through and getting the brake clean and wiping down everything so I could see if there's any issues. Just going between the block and the head, whatever one I'm not fumigated out of. And I didn't know what I could scrape the build up with. I didn't want to use anything to scratch up the the cylinder. So I'm just using a broken bit of funnel. Not like it's doing any good otherwise. And I get most of it too. Back to the head. It it doesn't look great on just preliminary preliminary. <laughs> area inspection it's it's pretty bad but I'm gonna clean it up anyway you'll see the the GoPro isn't really the best for these shots you can't really see exactly what I'm seeing but I'm gonna give it a pass with the phone and you'll be able to see some of the issues we got but right now I'm just cleaning I don't want anything to be hidden under soot and grime It's kind of strange in the between the valves there's like a little machined out portion almost just gonna get that wiped down really quick I'm probably getting lightheaded by this point I did that a couple more times but now here's the end result. Here's cylinder one. Looks all right. A little bit of crud. Cylinder two has a tiny bit of rust. You can see it on the sleeve there. But it's actually not that bad. What we're really looking out for is pitted rust. This is all just raised rust. And it could be cleaned right off. This was our cylinder that was full of water. You can see there's a bunch of junk. You can't really see the crack between the piston and the cylinder. Here's number four. If I could count. It's actually not that bad. You can see the piston has a bit of pitting, but that's not too bad. That won't really break anything. And pistons are a dime a dozen for these things. Number five. Not too bad. That's mostly just brake clean. And here's number six. It's looking pretty good. And if you'll note, we had a head gasket blow right here, but it doesn't look like it blew super bad. It might have just been seeping. And here we are on the cylinder head side, and every one of the cylinders has a crack between the valves. Now, Volkswagen phoned it in pretty hard on this engine, so there's actually a spec for what an acceptable amount of cracking is. It's a half millimeter, which in America speak is about 20 thousandths, which is kind of a lot for a crack. But I won't be able to actually look at them until I get these valves out and I could get some feeler gauges in there. You can see that weird machining. This one is the worst. It's not only cracked but raised. You can hear with my fingernail these last two. They're raised a little bit. All the other ones, pretty much fine. They also tend to crack by these pre-chambers, but it doesn't look like it's cracked at all. So next video, we're going to be taking this head apart so I can get some feeler gauges into those cracks. Uh, it doesn't look too great, but we're just going to play the hand we were dealt. And similarly here, I'm looking at the head gasket. It looks like it either wasn't a very bad head gasket. It didn't blow. It might have been seeping or something, but it doesn't look like it caused any visible damage. And here's the man or the gasket it's similar and keep your gasket there's like literally <laughs> billions of different kinds of head gaskets for this and the one six there's quite a few different ones so keep your old one so you know what you're looking for because you can see that there is pressure pushing against these blocked off sections so we're going to want a gasket where those are open